Hey guys, in this video I'm going to do a quick uh, setup guide on the Eshin Wizard. And I just got back from flying this, and it flies pretty much the same as this guy here on the right, which is the GB220 frame. Uh, if you guys want to see a little bit more detail about how these frames uh, look, just look at the review on this one uh, where I did the build for this. Uh, it flies the same, has all the same parts, but I'm going to show you a couple of differences. Uh, this, the GB220 doesn't have the side plate here that the wizard has on here that kind of keeps the grass and stuff out from the inside of the electronics, although the grass can still come in through the back here. And uh, obviously the parts are different on this one. This has racial star motors and uh, DYS CSCs. Uh, both Beale Heli S, so they uh, fly pretty much similarly. The throttle response is pretty much the same. Um, on the On the bottom here, You can see a couple of differences. Let me turn this one over. And here on the arms here, there's a little hole on this arm for the LED power to go through to the top part of the arm. Uh, this arm here doesn't have that hole. I'm not sure how much that's going to weaken the arm or not. Um, it might, uh, but this one doesn't have that. The bottom here, the bottom plate is, I'm pretty sure it's 100% identical. These are both uh, QVVR clones. The top plates are pretty much the same. There's these little cutouts on on the, within the wizard over here for the uh, notches for the side plate that are on the wizard but aren't on the GB220C right there. That's a notch for the side plate to hold it in place. That is not on the top plate over here. But other than that, they to me, they felt the same in, in terms of flying. I did do a little, a little bit of a flight test at the end, and um, I put some flight video up. The camera on the Wizard is probably the weakest component of everything that's on here. The motors seem pretty good. ESC seem pretty good. Flight controllers and SP Racing F3, it, it's all pretty standard stuff. The camera is is not that great. When you um, when I was flying it into the sun, sun's kind of low in the sky with slightly overcast conditions, the ground turned pretty dark, almost black, and it was hard. It was actually pretty hard to see where I was going when I was flying in the direction of the sun. When I was turning around and going away from the sun, uh, it seemed to be, be okay, but uh, that's, a, that's a pretty big problem with this camera. So if you guys are thinking about getting this, I would recommend uh, replacing the camera with either a really uh, inexpensive uh, CCD camera. I'll put a link to something that I've, I think is pretty good in the description. Or, or getting something like a Runcam Swift, which obviously is going to cost a lot more and add to the cost of the quad, but uh, your overall flying experience is going to improve a lot by replacing the camera because it's got better, uh, well, any, any of the camera will have better light handling and it'll have a, a wider field of view. The, the field of view and this is also pretty narrow. Now in the motors, I noticed that all of them are pretty, except for I think one of these, this one here, had some pretty rough bearings. So you can hear when I spin it. Whereas these other ones were pretty pretty smooth. You can hear that you can hear that sound is totally different. And over here, it just sounds really rough, like the, the bearing is shot. I didn't really notice it in flight. It didn't have any twitches or any other other issues, but uh, something you should be aware of. And also getting the the prop nut on with these little plastic motor guards on the side was pretty difficult so and, and the, the nylon uh, locking uh, mechanism here was pretty hard to uh, get this on here so what I had to do was actually put the nut on, an, on, on, on a motor that wasn't on here so I can grab the whole bell to loosen up these the, the nylon lock nuts so, so I guess just to get these on here so if you have trouble getting these on here with these motor guards on put the nuts on another motor where you can actually screw it all the way down by grabbing onto the bell, that will actually uh, thread the, the the nylon part that actually locks the nut on, and that that, that will help you get the uh, nut onto the motor. I think in the future I'll probably just get rid of these these plastic guards. They just kind of just get in the way. Um, the other thing that I should tell you is that I did fly with these props instead of the ones that I came with. Uh, these are 5045s. and um, because these are 2300 kV motors, I found that that these fly better than the 5040s. 
and the 5040 is a lot better on the higher KV motors, the 2600s, at least for me. And so that's why that's why I'm using these instead of the ones I came with. Um, but I'm sure the ones I came with will be just as fine, just not as much power. Um, I have at the end of this video, I'll be putting, or a little bit later in this video, I'll have a section on my beta flight flash, and I'll I'll uh, make some uh, notations in that when I go through that part of the video. So in order to fly this with my Trinity Evolution. I am changing the receiver over from PPM to IBUS and I soldered on this connector right here to UR3 and to the solder pads, uh, positive, negative, and the receive to the IBUS port on the IA6B receiver, which is right there at the top. And I removed the um, PPM connector that would go normally right over here. So I've uh, secured the receiver with a little bit of double-sided foam tape to the top of the flight controller. Uh, should be able to stay in there because I'll have the side plates on here. It shouldn't come out. And then I have uh, just zip-tied the two antennas to go out the back and the bottom here. Um, should be good enough. Uh, if you probably want better diversity, you probably should take one of these, put one out the back, and then the other one, maybe put it up along this standoff here. But um, I think this should be good enough for me because I don't usually fly too far away. Okay, so I've uh, closed it up and put the side plates back in, and I've replaced all of the um, screws that go into the standoff. There's uh, six on top and six on the bottom. They come normally with these little short ones, they're like five or six millimeters, and I replaced them with these longer ones that I have um, purchased separately. These are 12 millimeters, so they're just gonna, it's gonna go further into the standoff and grab into it more so that when you crash, uh, it doesn't just strip off, and then just, you basically have to replace the whole standoff when that happens. And uh, that, these little short ones, when you crash, they tend to just strip, and you have to replace the whole thing. So, uh, if you guys are getting this, I highly recommend uh, switching these screws out, because then it'll, it'll, it'll take a much, much uh, uh, harder crash to uh, get this to break. So, you want to definitely want to do that. And then I added an extra battery strap here in this slot that's behind the first one and added um, these little uh, grip pads here, or sticky pads, to uh, grip the battery. So as long as there's pressure from the strap holding the battery down, it should stay in. I got one over here and one over there. Okay, the uh, last thing I'm doing here is adding some conformal coating to these exposed uh, leads going to the LED. So I just kind of covered that and, and some of these are, I guess these are resistors here, just to make sure that uh, it doesn't short by accident, and I'm just using uh, this stuff here. It's a krill conformal coating. So this is just my uh, entire Betaflight flash recording. If you just follow all the steps that I've taken here, you should get the same results as me. Uh, a couple of things that I didn't do is I didn't actually set up the receiver and recording of this video or this portion of the video. So I'll uh, mention some things when we get to that part, spot. And the other thing is that I initially fly, uh, uh, configured this for DSHOT 300, but I found out that uh, DSHOT 300 was causing the motors to stutter. And so I had to uh, bring it down to DSHOT 150 uh, and that worked perfectly fine. That worked really well. Um, that way you don't have to do any sort of ESC calibration. The other thing that uh, isn't in this part of the video is when I flashed uh, the ESCs to um, Beale Heli uh, 16.6. So all I'll do is I'll have a video uh, card up in the corner that will cover both um, Beale Heli flashing for the ESCs and also setting up your receiver on iBus. Um, it's pretty actually pretty easy. So if you go to those videos, you can. Uh, select the correct ones for iBus. It just happens to be you need uh, UR3 selected for Serial RX and uh, you need um, a, uh, iBus selected as your protocol. So those are the only two things. So it's pretty simple to do. But I'll put cards up in the corner for those two videos.